Okay, Eric here with 30x40 Design Workshop. Today I want to do a quick review of the Breno TLC200 time-lapse camera. Now this is a time-lapse camera that records in HD. 1280 by 720 is the resolution, which is HD. It is not HDR, however, um, and we'll talk about what that means a little bit later. It comes with a 120 degree rotatable lens. It has a small LCD viewfinder, which I think is one of the sort of drawbacks of this camera. And it has the option for a whole number of accessories, which will sort of ex extensible lenses and uh, weather tight cases, things like that. Um, so let's look and see what you get inside the box. And it's a basic, um, it's made in Taiwan, so it's a pretty basic instruction manual. You get the camera, which has a small form factor here. It's about two and a half inches wide, two inches deep, and about four and a quarter, four and a half inches tall. You, it comes with a four gigabyte um, SD card. I upgraded that to a 32 gigabyte card and that sort of plugs in the side here. Uh, the last thing it comes with is four AA batteries and these batteries will last different time frames depending on how many frames you're capturing, what the frame rate is, that kind of thing. Um, it's also got a screw mount on the bottom here for attaching it to a tripod which can be helpful and you could design your own custom mount which, which this would mount to that may be a little sturdier than the other accessory mount that we'll look at. Um, so that's the, that's the camera, that's what comes in the box. Now um, I ended up getting a few additional accessories. This itself was $139 um, together. Uh, and then the accessories, the mount and the weather resistant case, this is not a, uh, a waterproof case by any means, but the weather resistant case itself um, and the mount together were about $70. So we're a little bit over $200 for this. Um, I'm gonna use it to capture construction time-lapse photos and site analysis photos. Um, and so for that amount of money, I think it's a pretty worthwhile investment. It fits in the weather tight case, the weather resistant case fairly simply. Um, the back closes and then you can see there's some gasketing around the edge of this case here. Snaps in there and then the mount itself um, hooks into the bottom. So the mounting of this and the flimsiness of this is pretty apparent as you look at it here. Um, you need to be careful as you're mounting it to uh, whatever substrate you're going to mount it to that you can still see the screen and still you're still able to access this. You can see if you're on a tree here and you mount it like this facing your job site and it's 20 feet in the air, it's going to be pretty difficult to get in here and actually see the screen and activate the recording and stop the recording, those kind of things. So um, it's, it pays to think about that a little bit in advance and, and set the angle of this such that you're not recording something at, at an extreme angle. Um, so one of the drawbacks of that. If we take it out of the case, we can just quickly review the um, functions of it. There are plenty of reviews online which walk through all of the details. Um, you can see this is the rotatable lens that will allow you to position this in, in any which way or capture a sky time lapse. Because it's not HDR, you're not able to capture things like the stars moving or the Milky Way. Um, I have tried that and it uh, was less than successful, even on a really dark sky. Um, so there's this rotatable lens. Um, the back of this here, as we boot it up, there's a slide switch which turns it on. Okay, so let's look at some of the features of this camera. So the things you care about in the menu, there are 14 sort of subsections to this menu. Things you really care about are the AVI frame rate first and foremost. So the AVI is the type of file that this outputs for you. As you press start and you begin recording frames for your time lapse and then you're ready to compile those frames and you press stop, you press the start button again, which actually stops the recording. This automatically processes the AVI, it outputs the video file according to your frame rate that you set in the menu here. Now a frame rate, uh, <clears throat> the default recommended frame rate that Brino recommends is 10 frames per second. So what that means is it will take, for every 10 frames that it captures, it will take those 10 frames and compress those down into one second. That produces a pretty standard time-lapse looking video. So you can see that time is elapsing between each one of these, these frames and it's sort of choppy looking. What you're used to seeing sort of in video production is 30 frames per second. That's a standard um, compression rate um, for things like a movie or, or a video. And 30 frames per second will give a very smooth looking video. It will also give you a very short video. So it will take 30 of your captured frames and compress those down into one second. Very smooth, very short, okay? So then the other things you're gonna care about, let's get this back to the 10 frames per second. <clears throat> As we come back into the 
menu here. We're gonna leave image quality on best. I don't see a reason to change that. You may wanna turn the timestamp on or off depending on what kind of milestones you wanna capture. Uh, low light recording, I don't recommend using this low light setting here. This is not an HDR camera as I mentioned earlier. Um, I tried recording stars and things like that, not very successful. The scene, we're gonna, it's, you have the choice between day and night. I leave it on day. I'm capturing images of construction progress or site images, um, and I'll leave it on day. Timer is really important. This can be used to capture daily progress. This can be used to capture daily progress on a construction site. Let's say the job site work starts at 6 a.m. every day and it ends at 3.30. You can set this timer based on a 24-hour clock to record that interval, whatever it is on your site. Obviously, to do that, you need to set the date and time using military time, so don't make that same mistake which I did. And then the output resolution and, and uh, LED display. The LED display is this little area here. A green light flashes every time it's taking a photo. Now let's get into some of the uh, pros and cons of, of this camera. So the pros of it, the price. It's $139 for this camera, about $70 in accessories. Um, if you have a building nearby your site which, which you're capturing, you actually don't even need the, the uh, weather resistant housing. You could set this on a window that's facing the site. Um, so fairly inexpensive. Certainly you could buy a cheap digital camera and do the same thing, assuming you could power the camera and then compile all of the individual frames that it captures into an AVI. I, I bought this because it's just simple to use. I press start, it starts recording. When I'm done uh, capturing the, the time-lapse video, I simply set, set I simply press start again and it compiles the AVI for me. I can then remove the, HD, the SD card, put it into my laptop, bring it into iMovie for post-processing. So simplicity is worth a lot. Um, the fact that it compiles the AVI for you is worth a lot. Um, and then the, the other benefit of this is the timer function. So I can set this out on a job site and it will automatically record pro um, progress throughout you know, the days, weeks, months that I choose. Battery life is really good on this. Um, so you have the option to set this out without any external power source for months at a time without any problems, assuming you have the uh, weather resistant case. Now let's get into some of the negatives. The UI for this on this interface here, really clunky. Um, as I said, it, it kind of confuses me, confounds me every time I come into it and try and navigate around. Um, so that could be better. Uh, one of the big disadvantages here is the narrow field of view. So this only captures a limited field of view. There are external lenses you can buy to change the angle of this. There are some um, comments that I've read that once you add the external lens that this tends to droop a little bit. And so that would be kind of a bummer if you were trying to capture four months of time-lapse photography and found out on month two that it drooped. Um, that's kind of a bummer. For my purposes, this works just fine. I can set it up and range view with the range finder here and get my subject in, um, in the whole viewfinder. Perfectly fine for me. As I said before, it's not HDR, so you don't have low light capturing capabilities with this. Again, not a big deal for me. I'm capturing things during the day, but if you're looking to capture things at either end of the day, it may be more difficult. Um, aiming with this is really um, tricky. If you have it in the mount and you're mounting it to a tree, for example, and you want to see the viewfinder to see what you're aiming at, it's really hard. You have to get a mirror in there or put your phone on it with a reverse uh, you know, camera in there to see what you're doing. And then activating and stopping the video recording process can be a little bit clunky. As I look at the weather tight housing, um, one of the other negatives, one of the other drawbacks of this is it's a little bit flimsy. So this can be overcome by um, creating a more solid mount if you choose. And it does have the screw hole in the bottom to, to create maybe a more solid mount. You can see just the weight of the camera here and the um, structure of this plastic means it's gonna bend. So if you're on a site where there's a lot of wind and this is attached to a tree, your video may suffer because of that. Um, you know, accessing the um, on-off function of this is, a, is the final drawback that I think is sort of unfortunate. Um, if you're recording with this, and let's say you're recording on a two or three minute time interval, and that little green light on the top is flashing every two or three minutes, there's no way of immediately telling you're actually recording a time-lapse video unless you know you are. Um, and if you try and hit the menu here, and uh, press the start button after you've been recording, um, it will just, 
it won't respond. It doesn't come up with a menu that says you are recording. Are you sure you want to stop recording? Um, it will simply say processing. And at which point you've already canceled the entire video and it's compiling the AVI for you. So that part of it is a little bit unfortunate. I think if you're able to tell that you're recording video, you know you're recording and it came up with some sort of error message saying, are you sure you want to stop? This would be much improved. But actually, for my purposes, not a huge deal. Um, I'm going to be using this to record sort of construction milestones. So big events, I'm not going to be using it to record, you know, four months at a time, like I'm going to a remote job site and leaving this for four months at a time and then coming back to get it only to be surprised that the batteries died or somebody hit, you know, stop recording. Um, so some of those drawbacks, I think, um, may, may be more uh, pressing to people who have those needs out of this camera. But for the price, I think it's a pretty good value. Okay, so let's talk about some of the reasons you might use this time-lapse camera. Um, obviously, for construction progress photos, makes a lot of sense. Um, you can use it to monitor remote sites. That's, um, that's a good, good option for you. You can use it to record your design process. You can um, set this up above your workstation. This movable camera might, might be interesting positioned here while you're sketching. Um, use it as a means to sort of reveal the process behind the work that you do. That would be interesting. Um, one of the other big uses that I have for this is using it for site analysis. So setting it on a site and letting it sit there for a day or a week um, and just recording the sort of daily patterns, maybe movement of wildlife or movement of, um, you know, the clouds or the winds and prevailing light um, patterns on the site. All of that can be sort of compressed in here and viewed through a different lens. Um, so I find that really interesting. I'm sure there's a thousand other uses for it. Um, those uses alone that I just listed are worth the price of admission, which is fairly low, as I mentioned. So I think it's a competent camera, not the best on the market, but totally affordable. Thanks for watching.